Good morning. Larry Martin here. I've spent the last several days making this. It's a candle holder. It incorporates quite a few different features, several different kinds of wood. It's an inside out turning using wood off the crate that came with my, that enclosed my new Grizzly bandsaw. Therefore, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name this thing my Grizzly candle holder. It has, uh, the in, inside piece is made of several different woods. I made a mistake and did not film turning the inside. I, I filmed or videoed prepping it to turn it, but I didn't film turning it or inserting it inside. Now the way I inserted it briefly was I had the, the blank turn inside out and I had it in two halves. So I set this I set this in the middle and used thick super glue, CA glue, to hold it in place. And after it was in place, then I glued the two halves back together. And that's how I did that. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to show the entire process in, in real time. No music, no no fast time or anything like like that. But I'm only going to show uh, excerpts of each procedure rather than sitting there and boring you to death with, with you know, 30 minutes of just turning a piece. So let's get on with it, and we'll see you on step one. Now you see all those boards right there with the nails in them? That's what's left of the crate that my bandsaw came in. All right, I've got them all planed and laid out. Sort of wish I'd have left the holes in them now. I'd have had longer pieces. Uh, I couldn't uh, couldn't get four equal and decent sized pieces out of them like they were. So what I've, I've done, as you can see, is I'm, I'm going to stagger them like so. Uh, when I get them all glued up, it looks like I'm going to be able to have about uh, four eight and a half inch pieces. And when I put them together with the paper, I'll have about a seven seven and a half inch square. So that ought to be able, to be able to make something nice out of that. Well, I got it all glued up. Took every clamp I could muster. I definitely got to go buy some more if I'm going to do any more of this. Took a lot of glue. I think I got more on the outside than I did the inside. Okay. I've already planed them. And I put the two halves together with uh, paper in between, and now I'm going to join this half to this half. Uh, and then after it sets up overnight, I always like for them to set up overnight. I'll put them on a lathe tomorrow. Shouldn't have a problem finding the center. Just a couple things. Uh, when you glue these together with paper in between, I strongly suggest you do not use newspaper. Uh, I'd used it one time and I had one hell of a time getting them apart. Newspaper would just soak up the glue and you, you end up with a, a bond. Now I know it's been successful with some people, but I have. I generally just use a piece of paper out of a notebook or brown paper if I've got it. And it fits on there just fine. So first thing I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to put some glue on one half. I usually put the glue on quite liberally. Might as well put some on this side while I'm at it. I'm using tight bond too. Seems to work quite well. Brush it all out. Make sure you don't miss any parts. Although on this particular thing, it doesn't matter as much as if you were gluing wood to wood. But at the same time, you sure don't want it coming apart on you. And some on this one. Down real good. And just a little bit 
here. I'm going to take it off, clean my brush off a little bit. Same time, I'm sort of making sure this is pressed down good. Then I'll flip this one over. Let's see. Make sure you got you got it clamped up to the wazoo. I have wax paper underneath, so I don't want them to become part of my table. And we put a bunch of clamps on it. I've been using these so much sometimes they're hard to move because they got glue on them. Okay, I've got it all glued together in one big old block now. And I've already taken binding tape and wrapped it all the way around, as you can see there. Uh, that's just a safety precaution. My next step will be to take the forester bit. I'm going to drill in each end about a half inch. And the purpose of that is I'm going to turn, turn this between centers. And I like for my drive and my, my uh, live center to sit in the wood just a little as sort of a precaution. When I get that done, I'm going to go over here to this very rough uh, grit belt sander right here. And I'm going to take, and you can see the marks right here and here. I'm going to take and round these corners down here before I put it on the lathe. I'm going to be turning like this. This is going to be the inside. In fact, I think I drew it right here. Okay, this is, I'm going to be turning this, and this is going to be the outside. So when I get this all turned and smooth and sanded and all the good stuff, I'll break it apart and flip them around and this will become the nice smooth uh, void on the inside of the uh, vessel. So I'm going to slice these corners down a little bit too. Keep from chipping them off maybe. All right, see if that makes any kind of difference. Well, the inside is basically done. I've got to put, uh, I think I'm going to put some lacquer on it. It's got a little pecan stain, and I used uh, just sand and sealer on it, about three coats. So I'm going to let it dry overnight, and I'm going to spray a little lacquer on it. The next step will be to uh, pull it off and use a chop saw to straighten both ends out, just barely cut them. And uh, then I'll break it apart and put it back together the other way. Well, I hope you can see the effects of this. I just got done spraying, <clears throat> this is the inside, with this uh, Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Glaze. I've used it quite often, and it is amazing stuff. The only downside I have been able to see is that it seems like it runs fairly easy, so you have to, have to sort of... You have to take it slow. I'm hoping you can see this. And, and that's one coat, my friends. It has uh, like three coats of sanding sealer on it. And I use my uh, trusty sanding rotation tool, I guess you call it, this, to uh, quickly go over it. I mean, this puts it down in a hurry. I can't say too much about this tool. I, I know. Sometimes you get tired of hearing it. But there you go. Next step is to, to let this sit up and I, I'll take it off and uh, I'm going to use a chop saw to clean up. I, evidently when I put this together I got them a little offset. So I'm going to use a chop saw to clean up the bottoms and the top. Okay, I've got it uh, chop sawed off on both ends so that they're nice and flat. But before you take it apart, it's, it's absolutely imperative that you number the four quadrants and draw an arrow here 
and I'm just going to go around to each one and draw an arrow to this corner. And then what I will do is I will reverse them when I get them apart. And the arrows will all meet each other. That way there is no chance of screwing up. Except if it can be done, I can do it. All right, they're, they're apart now. Didn't want you to see that in case it swarmed on me. Less editing. So what you do is you take and you reverse each one separately. And you point the arrows that you had pointing out. Glue two pair of these back together. I'm going to leave the two sides separated because I'm going to make something to go on the inside and I can't put it in once it's all together. Okay, I've got the two quarters together to form two halves. They're all glued together and these will, when these dry, I'm going to somehow vise them together and, and drill some holes in them because I'm going to build something to go in the center and I can't put it together until I get that built and set in the center. I'm not quite sure it's going to be some walnut with some copper in it. It'll be like a little figurine in the middle. I think it'll be pretty. What I've got here is a real hodgepodge. This is what I'm going to turn down to go in the middle of my inside out. So what, what I've done is I start off with some walnut. Okay, this piece is cedar. This is oak. This again, is this is black walnut. I have a brass tube inside. I've already polished it. Not sure what I'm going to do with it. I may put a few little rings on it. And this, this last one is persimmon. The idea is to make this sort of pointed or something like that going down to here and make this like a little bowl going down to the brass. And this will just taper with some type of uh, e either uh, probably a valley or something like that. So I'm going to epoxy this together. Uh, these are already glued together here, but I've got to, I'm going to use a five minute epoxy and epoxy the brass tube in. I'll, I'll show you. I'll take it apart right here. Okay, what I've, what I've done right here, see I've taken this brass fitting and it's thick wall and I put a, a quarter inch all thread all the way through and it, it's epoxied in. So I've drilled a hole for it to go right into here. It'll be epoxy there and then it'll go into this other one and it will be epoxy there. And hopefully when it sets up in a few hours it'll be uh, solid as a rock and we can go on with whatever we're going on with. I got it out of the clamps and I've squared it up on the sander and the bandsaw so I got all nice square edges. It's just a hair out of square. Here's a little trick that I use that helps me a lot especially when I know I'm going to be turning the center out. Okay, This piece of walnut is going to be my base. And what I do is, is I find the center on this and I drill a hole and I put me an eighth inch dowel pin in there. Now I also drill a hole in this and that way I will always find my center when I glue it. No slipping, no sliding. But first thing I'm going to do after I get the other side done, I've got to cut another piece of walnut, is I'm going to 45 all these corners off to make it round before I put this on because my base and my top are going to be square. So I'm going to head for the band saw. And I've got the four corners sawed off at 45 degree angle to give me somewhat of a round piece of wood there. And uh, I'm getting ready for the glue, glue up process. I'm going to use this walnut. Like I told you earlier, I've got my dowel pins. So this one's going to go here. I'd have to line it up. Easier said than done. And then I think I'm going to put me a glue block on, on one end. Well, I need to apologize to you folks. Um, I guess during my enthusiasm, thinking about this during the night, I just come out here and I just got started and, and totally forgot about my camera. So I'm going to catch you up. 
Uh, I'm going to put a T light in the, in the top. So the first thing I did was I, I drilled a uh, using a Forrester bit. I drilled a hole in the top, and then used a uh, finishing gouge to, to trim it out a little bit. So this is a little T light to fit in the top. Now I mounted it with a waste block and with glue, and I used my little dowel pin in the center of everything to make sure they were lined up. And it still wobbles a little bit. I guess that maybe the wood moves or something. And then this top will be basically done. And the reason I'm doing the top first is the last time I did an inside out turn, I did all this and then I just touched the top and if you remember right, it blew up on me. So I'm not gonna touch the top anymore after I get this and this done and the same thing on the bottom. And then I'll tackle the center because I don't want that stress on the, on the uh, long end there. All right, <clears throat> talking time's over. I imagine I'll put this on, I can't talk anymore. epoxy and I'm going to put it all around here just for grins no other reason too much. Why not? Oh gosh, I don't think that's going to look too bad. Not now. We have to do some with that in a little while. Yeah. All right. I'm going to use a Dremel to clean up some of these rough edges, and I'll I'll come back with some sandpaper. There's epoxy until tomorrow. And it says it's five minutes, but that's sort of like five minutes you can touch it. You're going to turn it out, and I believe it needs to be a little longer than that. 
So what I'm going to do, make sure I do a little bit more of this. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to cut the uh, blue block off. Okay, what I did is I took an old screwdriver, get it here where I can see it in the camera, and I made a round nose scraper out of it. I tried the negative rake scraper, but evidently it needs a burr on something this small. So I tried that, and it seems to be working real well. Turn it up here, I'm going to be using it. For you guys that have a Harbor Freight like mine and you've put a hand wheel on it, you have a problem with knocking out things because it just has no hole in it. Well, here's a solution. Somebody commented on, on one of my videos to put a nut on first. That's one solution. And basically, then you can put your drive in and you can screw your nut out and it pushes it right out. I've tried it and it works really well. This isn't really a nut, I don't have one, but you can also use a small face plate to do the exact same thing. I'm not using a face plate now because I want to do some cutting in at this angle and I'm thinking a face plate might get in my way. So now I'm using, using this sleeve. It is for making a wooden face plate, but I, which I haven't done yet, which may be a video I'll make later. So I'm going to put this thing back on and I'm going to cut out the bottom and just a hair more sand and we'll be ready to put a finish on. Well, I've almost got it sanded up. I like my big advocate of using power tools for sanding and I wanted to show you why. I'm going to have to turn on the dust collector so I can't talk to you, but I'm, you see you've got a few uh, marks right in here. I'm going to show you how to get these out very quickly without going through hours and hours of sanding. I have probably spent, oh, 15, 20 minutes sanding this entire thing to give you an idea. So I'm going to turn the dust collector on and do a little bit of this. <clears throat>
I just got done putting a stain on it I'm using uh, mid wax and I'm using golden pecan or pecan <coughs> and there it is also put it on on the walnut so there we go my friends that's the way it's going to look there's your little tea light holder is going to go on the top well, here's the end product, or at least I thought it was. Get you a, bit, a closer look at it. You can see inside it has whatever you want to call it in there. In the bottom, looks like that sits on the on the four corners. I think it's really nice. Uh, pretty proud of it. Well, I took it in my in the house to show it to my wife. And she said, well, I really like it, except for one thing. And I said, well, what's that, hon? She said, that little bitty tea light on the top just is not fit with it. You need something bigger, like a big candle. So I thought about it for about 10 seconds, and I said, you know, you're right. And that, that tea light is just not proportional with it. So I need to do something about it. So she looked around and she found this candle for me. So this candle is going to go right here, except I'm going to I'm going to cut it down. I think it's a good good way to wax my bandsaw blade anyway. Well, I was going to use dogwood for building this collar around the the candle, but uh, I went to get my dogwood and I I forgot to seal the ends and. It was about six inches around. It split all the way down the middle, almost from end to end. So I couldn't get a piece big enough around that didn't have a bad crack in it. This I had in a plastic bag. This is uh, this is American Holly. Yeah, I'm going to try to do something with it. So let's get rolling and see what happens. Getting ready to park this off now. It basically, it looks like a little bowl, but it's a sleeve for the candle. I went ahead and I uh, shortened the candle. I thought it was too long and fits in here like that. And that's the way that works. Now, here, here's a little trick I use whenever I'm parking something off like that because I don't like to see them fly, fly off. This is like one of them little floaty things. I put this on right here like that. Plus, when it comes off, it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to back this off just a hair so it won't hit it. And we're going to part this dude off now. Oop. And I wanted to raise this up a little bit higher. All right. Now we're going to part it off. super glue and spray and we're done my friends hope mama's happy this time see when I get it all sprayed there you go my friends we're done if you like it subscribe give me a like 
Uh, if you don't like it, uh, please comment and tell me why you don't. Don't give me a dislike. Just, just give me a chance to explain it or make changes in the next one. I would appreciate that. So take care of yourself, and I'll see you on the next video.